In New Light Video Magazine, Seeing in a New Perspective, November Issue 2013, Volume 9. Feature Story, Contemporary Medicine Woman, Karen Schrappa. Meteor Fireball Explosions. Rolling Green Project, From the Goat to the Table. Giving Thanks and Gratitude. The Purpose of Ceremony. Paranormal Investigations The Theremin Instrument Aromatherapy Galaxies in Our Midst Starscope Zodiac and Cusp Astrology Monthly Forecast Catch the monthly music trivia and the celestial events calendar inside. Find more at www.innewlightvideomagazine.com or follow us on YouTube. Table of Contents About in New Light Video Magazine Contributors and Credits Other World News Meteor Fireball Explosions Rolling Green Project Giving Thanks and Gratitude Feature Story Contemporary Medicine Woman with Karen Schrappa. Mystic Corner. The Purpose of Ceremony. What's Up? Paranormal Investigations. Entertainment Central. Music Trivia. The Theremin Instrument. Holistic Health. Aromatherapy. Astronomy and Astrology Astronomy Photo of the Month Galaxies in Our Midst Celestial Events Calendar Starscope's Astrology Zodiac and Cusp Forecast What are the Starscopes? Find your Zodiac or Cusp and see what the stars have in store for you this month. About in New Light Video Magazine a New Light Video Magazine is an innovative video magazine created to share news and stories that may allow you to gain new perspectives of our world. We strive to bring things into a new light by researching and exploring world events, news, and information. A New Light Video Magazine is a written and narrated magazine in a video format that can basically read itself to you, making it user-friendly for the hearing and visually impaired. We wanted to make it easy to access our information and to view it in a format that could be seen almost anywhere the internet is available, making our publication worldwide. Our monthly publications are uploaded to YouTube each month and available to view on your phone, tablet, and computer without the need for apps. We hope you enjoy this new and innovative way of seeing things in a new light. We are always interested in new topics that can offer a new perspective of seeing things in our world. If you have a story or topic you would like to share with us, submit a brief description and send us an email at innewlightmag at gmail.com. Become a contributor and you will receive special mention in our credits and you may qualify for an ad space. For more information on advertising space in our magazine, please send a request to the above email and place add space in the subject. To stay up to date with us, you can always go to our website at innewlightvideomagazine.com. Become a contributor. Show your support to bring things in a new light for the world. Share your comments, read our blogs, get informed and inspired. Find us on our blog talk radio to listen to the audio and chat with the staff. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We'll see you there. Creative Divine Studios, the transformative power of sacred sound, the school of sound and energy resonance with Murr Damamion. Contact Murr at facebook.com backslash creative divine or facebook.com backslash Melinda Damarmion. Other World News Meteor Fireball Explosions what is really going on up there? In our issues, our certified astrologer Tammy Sabo 
gives us the highlights of asteroid meteor showers. This shows us that yes, they can predict these events. So why wasn't there a warning or more coverage on the explosion of the meteor over Ohio back in September 2013? and the one in Russia that happened back around the 15th of February 2013. The explosion that happened in Ohio was seen for miles. Even those across the Ohio River in West Virginia reported seeing it. There were over thousands who witnessed this event, but did you realize that it actually killed two people? Part of this meteor hit an elderly couple's apartment and caught it on fire, resulting in their death. Actually, I don't even remember hearing much about it on the regular news. All the information I found was online. I only heard one mention of the Russian meteor fireball that hit on the regular news, so I mostly got information about it online as well. Did you know that the meteor that hit Russia was the largest rock to hit the planet since 1908? Part of the meteor was found by Lake Chibarkul outside the city and it weighed 1,256 pounds before it broke the scale and they consider it to be just a chunk. It is important here to note that this meteor that hit near the city of Shelyabinsk injured more than 1,600 people just by the shock wave alone. The impact was estimated to be as strong as 20 Hiroshima atomic bombs. Watching these videos, it seems it exploded right before it actually hit the earth. Now I could be wrong, but go check it out for yourself and see what you find. The American Meteor Society has several videos on their site. According to the American Meteor Society, www.amsmeteors.org, they receive reports on fireballs every day. So why are we not notified by our government officials that are responsible for this information on these huge ones? And why is it not in the general news? If we are able to see all these coming at us, why are we being notified and warned? The most recent sightings have been five reports from Michigan, Illinois, and Iowa. Some even think that this can be connected to the planet Nibiru, making its way toward us. With all the satellites we have around our beautiful Earth and plenty of top-of-the-line telescopes, you would think that we would have warnings of these events so we can be prepared. In an article on Space.com entitled, Military Hush-Up, Incoming Space Rocks Now Classified, they state, For 15 years, scientists benefited from data gleaned by U.S. classified satellites of natural fireball events in Earth's atmosphere, but no longer. A recent U.S. military policy decision now explicitly states that observation by hush-hush government spacecraft of incoming balladies and fireballs are classified secret and are not to be released. Space.com has learned. The satellite's main objectives include detecting nuclear bomb tests and their characterizations of asteroids and lesser meteoroids as they crash the atmosphere has been a byproduct data bonanza for scientists. Scientists were receiving priceless information about these happenings, but why now is it classified? Dr. Carol Rosen, aerospace executive of Fairchild Industries, have been speaking largely on the secrecy behind space-based weapons. She states that the game of who can control, weaponize, and occupy space is being played. Doing more research, I found an article NRL scientists produced densest artificial ionosphere plasma clouds using HARP on www.nrl.navy.mil. This is very important here. This site states previous artificial plasma density clouds have lifetimes of only 10 minutes or left, says Paul Barnard, PhD, NRL Space Use and Plasma Section. This higher density plasma ball was sustained over one hour by the HARP transmissions and was extinguished only after termination of the HARP radio beam. Now we know 
that when the military claims they have been doing this for 10 years, we know it's longer than that, like say 20 plus years. I am sure some of you remember that the U.S. created a monsoon in Vietnam back in the 1960s. That is a matter of military record, but we don't hear about that in the general public, putting us in the rear with all of this technology. Many believe that these plasma balls were what fell over Russia, Australia, Florida, New York City, Texas, the Bay Area and San Francisco, and the massive one that crashed over Cuba. We are able to transmit frequencies to certain satellites to make large asteroids or many numerous asteroids dust by using molecular dissociation. We do have that power with frequency. So, are we really seeing meteorites or are we seeing these plasma balls produced by HARP? So what is going on up there? We all need to further research this and uncover what is being hidden from us. This is one article that I could write on for months. It seems there are more and more documents being declassified containing information that is opposite of what we were told and were taught. It would serve us as human beings on Earth and hopefully divert our obvious direction of extinction to stop all of this endless wars and to unite as one people. Put our religious disagreements aside and fully pay attention to what is happening in front of our faces before we allow the destruction of our beautiful planet along with us. We are the guardians of Earth and all of her living beings. Now let's accept our roles in this. Let's put our iPads, cell phone, and TV nonsense aside and all the things that are designed to keep us distracted and do our research or just take a look up at night. I think you'll be surprised at all you might see on a beautifully clear night. We would love to hear from you and what you have discovered on this topic. This is Stacy Hill in New Light Video Magazine. For all your musical needs, it's the Georgia Music Warehouse because everybody plays. And if you're just beginning, ask about their private lessons today. From the goat to the table. Our Rolling Green project for November has been animal husbandry on the ranch. Rick is taking care of the barn and we are both working with the goats, though he works with the pigs too. Our greatest endeavor is goat milking. We currently only have one milking, but we soon will have three more to add to that. Our mama goat, Surrey, is currently getting milk twice per day and has quickly gone from producing about enough for my daily coffee to us having a stockpile in the fridge with about 2.5 pints per day. The others will give even more because they will be freshly bolted, and we can start their milking about three weeks after they bolt. This caused us to realize we needed to find a way to do something with all of this milk. It's so much more nutritious than cow's milk and much easier to digest. Cheese is one of our staples, so I got the bright idea to look for recipes for homemade goat milk products. I never thought it would be so easy, and it's even more delicious than anything you'll find in the local grocery. I do know you can use this recipe with your store-bought goat milk too, but I'm going to walk you through it from the farm to the table. We start by milking the goat until we have about a gallon of milk, usually about three to four days of milking, but can also do the recipes with a quart. I wanted a larger yield on the cheese, so I've been working with the gallons. If your milk is fresh from the goat, you want to be sure to strain it into the containers before storing it to remove any hair, dirt, or other particles that may be in it. Once we have the gallon saved, the milk has aged the appropriate one to three days before preparing the cheese. It is very important to not use aluminum pots, utensils, or anything that will be a part of the cheese making. Glass, plastic, or stainless steel is highly recommended. The gallon is poured into your boiling pot, and one cup of white vinegar or lemon juice is added, stirred, and left to sit for 10 minutes, giving the cream and the milk time to curdle. After 10 minutes, turn your burner onto medium-high and place a candy thermometer into the mix. You will need to stir occasionally with a wooden, plastic, or stainless steel spoon and watch for the temperature of the milk to reach 180 degrees just before it boils. When the frothy bubbles form a layer over the top, it's ready to take off of the heat and let it cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. 
While that's cooling, you have time to set up your draining pans. You will need a colander, a bowl that it can sit in or on for the way to drain into, and a cheesecloth, butter cloth, or cotton muslin linen to line the colander with. I use clean linen pieces for making the cheese because it's easy to toss into the wash to clean up and you need to scald the cloth before using it. I use my tea kettle to boil enough water to cover the cloth in a small bowl and pour the boiling water over it. Then place the colander in the whey draining bowl and line the colander with the cloth. By this time, your cheese is ready to be separated from the liquid whey, so pour it into the colander and let it sit to drain for an hour and a half. After your draining time, pull the edges of the cloth together and twist it into a ball as you squeeze the rest of the whey out. This is the time where you can decide how moist or dry you want your cheese to be. I found that once there is a creamy consistency to the whey coming out of the cheese, if I squeeze until that is gone also, I get a drier, crumbly cheese similar to a grated Parmesan consistency. I like to stop when I first see the creamy whey and leave it in for the moist cheese too. Let your cheese ball hang over your spoon or side of the colander and set for another hour. Grab a container with a lid and dump the cheese into it using your spoon to scrape off any left on the cloth. With a fork, gently break up the cheese and add your salt, herbs, and seasonings. I like to use sea salt, garlic, and lemon pepper as my base seasoning and add other herbs from the garden here like dill, purple basil, oregano, or anything else flavorful. Place the lid on your cheese and let it set in the refrigerator to let the flavor set in and your cheese is ready for the table or some delicious meals and snacks. And don't throw out the whey. It can be used for bread making, in stew or soup stock, add it to livestock feed, and many other useful applications. We'll be making yogurt from the goat milk for our next project, which can also make other types of cheeses. To see the full video, go to www.rollinggreenproject.org and keep up to date with things here on the ranch. This is Samantha Phoenix with the Rolling Green Project and a New Light Video Magazine. Uplift, create, and share at Anahata Healing Arts in the Starland District of Savannah, www.anahatahealingarts.com. Thanksgiving, having an attitude of gratitude. Welcome November and happy Thanksgiving to the United States. This holiday is poorly dated back to 1621 Plymouth Feast of Harvest. As a child, I was taught this is when the Wampanoag Indians, seeing the new colonists were not faring well with their crops, shared an autumn harvest feast with Plymouth colonists. I am sure many of us Americans were in several plays depicting how they suspected it happened. The colonists, seeing it as a beautiful gesture the Native Americans made toward them, began to celebrate it as a holiday in the U.S. It wasn't until we were in the middle of the Civil War in 1861 that Abraham Lincoln made it a national holiday. Most countries do celebrate a sort of Thanksgiving harvest feast in their cultures, marking a certain time to celebrate their great bounties. With all the economic changes we have been going through globally, I do believe it has given us a different approach to celebrating Thanksgiving. It seems these hard times have brought about a sense of humbleness and unity. We are beginning to be thankful not only for this time of year, but be thankful every single day. Having an attitude of gratitude is many people's approach now. With all this change happening in our world, it has forced people to go out and become their own bosses, pursuing their own dreams. We are learning to be thankful for what we have and to help others that are suffering. It seems it is bringing about a sense of humanitarianism, paying it forward, so to speak. I have read articles of those that are out of work due to the government shutdown, having their lunches paid for, those that are spouses of military personnel being left money on their cars. I read an article of a woman that was caught shoplifting food from a grocery store to feed her children, only to have her arresting officer to pay for her groceries. How wonderful these messages are. We are learning, for some the hard way, that we are here together on this one beautiful planet. In a previous article, I wrote about the power of positive daily affirmations have on our DNA and how it rewrites our brain into thinking differently. Now, taking that into consideration, let's then consider how our emotions play a big part in our thoughts about yourself and others. 
As we begin to be grateful for all the little things, we open ourselves up to the bigger things. Only we can make the conscious decision to put our egos aside and realize we are the only ones that can help each other. We must make ourselves responsible for our actions, realizing that what we do to one, we do to many, including ourselves. So let's do this. Let's wake up every morning to a thanksgiving and be grateful, even if it's just for breathing. Finding peace within yourself will help find peace on the outside. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and may you have gratitude every day of your life. This is Stacy Hill in New Light Video Magazine. Contact us at innewlightmag at gmail.com for information on placing your advertisement in our publication. This is Stacy Hill with the New Light Video Magazine, and we are here at the Skidaway Island State Park in Savannah, Georgia, and I am with Karen. And Karen, how do you pronounce your last name again? Chapra? Shrapa. Okay. Shrapa. Yeah. And she is a... Well, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting to, have, <laughs> to sort of define uh, what I do, but I would say, uh, you know, I started in physical therapy mm -hmm. about 25, 30 years ago. And um, I, I feel like at this point in my life, I would consider myself a medicine woman, but basically my whole kind of relationship to medicine and what medicine in has, mm -hmm. has really changed right. over that time. But in many ways, I feel like, yes, I've always been involved with medicine or healing in some way. Yeah. Um, I was noticing that on your website, it says you have been dedicating yourself to mastering the art and science of healing. Mm -hmm. and how did you come about that? Well, I think for me, um, you know, the first steps on a, a healing path really were for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was a very heavy smoker. You know, I started smoking at 11 years old. So by the time I looked to go to school for physical therapy, I was like in my mid-20s. And I like literally needed to heal my physical body. But I felt like, um, you know, how could I be a health professional and be a smoker? That was sort of the thing that put me over the edge. And uh, so going back to school for physical therapy, actually I had started running. So running became my medicine. So I've been running a very long time. So rather than being addicted to cigarettes, I kind of got hooked on mm -hmm. running. And uh, so that was really where um, I feel my both personal and professional healing journey started. I didn't realize that you also have a book mm -hmm. entitled A Structure for yeah. Spirit. Yeah. And um, is that about your personal experiences or is that? Well, um, what really inspired that mm -hmm. book was, I guess it was about maybe 15 years or so ago, I was in a, a yoga therapy training mm -hmm. uh, program and, and we were mandated to have a daily practice. So prior to that time, you know, I'd meditate once in a while and I'd you know, kind of stretch and do yoga once in a while, but I had never done anything every day. And I found for me, first of all, it was met with a lot of resistance. I mean, I was really uh, rebelling, I think in some ways against, oh, somebody telling me, you know, what I have to do. But after six months, you know, that mandate was lifted and I found I had received so much benefit from that, that the practice, my, my daily practice really continued over that time. So working with people, that was always a message I had, like trying to find some time each day, you know, dedicating, even if it's like five minutes and, and you know, something that you could do to nurture yourself, to, you know, be somewhat introspective, because I haven't really worked primarily with people that were coming to see me because they wanted some spiritual practice. I mean, they, they've been coming to me through this Western medical system mm -hmm. because they're in pain right but you know so I feel like uh, to sort of address that we have to also look a little bit deeper than the physical body right. so most people had no context for that or felt overwhelmed like where would I even start mm -hmm. so that was really what um, motivated me to create the book it's really more like a workbook and different what I would call awareness practices that somebody could do each day. Tomorrow night, mm -hmm. we have a despacha here. Yes, yes that's going to be yeah. awesome. Uh huh. If people were interested in having this kind of thing in their area, mm -hmm. how would people get in contact with you? And do you work on what on your Well, you know, the way my life has been shaping itself over the past year is I, I, I really do travel a lot. So. Um, 
I, I mean, the best thing would be, you know, like through the website or that sort of thing. People could contact me. But I'm working now primarily in New Mexico and in really rural communities, which is very different for me because I've been in New York my whole life. Um, but then it also gives me the freedom to have chunks of time to be able to, you know, create ceremonies or do events. And uh, I offer it really more as a way to raise funds now. Um, mm -hmm. I've been on a journey with women to Peru for the past four years. We just completed our fourth year. And one of the things we started was a nonprofit organization called Kiawasi, which is um, its mission is to empower the women, empower women w world over, because really our journey is about awakening mm -hmm. the feminine. And we've been working with a community of women in Maris, which is in the Sacred Valley in Peru. But our vision is really much bigger than that, but that's where it's starting. So um, obviously uh, uh, an organization does need funds, um, so anything that is raised through this event in terms of money is goes to Kiawasi. So I feel grateful, you know, that, um, you know, I have the resources that allows me then to, you know, be able to offer this in, in this kind of way. Well, your website also is um, www.astructureforspirit.com. Okay, that's the blog. That's the blog, and your per you have a personal website, right? It's just my name, Karen Schrappa. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, www.karen and chapter at c h r a p p a dot com. Oh, Stacy, yeah, excellent. <laughs> Watching. This is Stacy Hill and this is Karen Chopra and this is in New Light Video Magazine. Reiki attunement classes with Reiki Master Instructor Rev. Stacy Hill. For more information, send an email to RevStacyHill at gmail.com and start a journey in Reiki today. What's up? Paranormal investigations. Knowing what the bumps in the night are. Although experiencing several unexplained happenings, hearing things, and seeing the unexplainable when I was young, I only became really interested in the paranormal about five years ago. I had just moved back to the Savannah area, and a friend of mine asked me to help her out investigating an old building. What an experience that was. Of course, I went on to investigate several places in Savannah, not to mention my own personal experiences, while just being out and about walking around Savannah, Georgia. I know nowadays there is some kind of ghost hunting show on every channel it seems, but at that time there wasn't, so a lot of what I experienced was quite new. I did get wonderful training and believe it or not was able to debunk one popular ghost investigation show when a group of us went to investigate the same place, so don't believe all you see on TV. I would like to add that I experienced a lot of things at that place, so I do believe, as they concluded, that there is paranormal activity there. Someone asked me the other day, why, experiencing what you experienced, would you go to investigate these supposed haunted places and subject yourself to these happenings? Good question. Why do we do these things? Well, my answer was, why not? I question everything, then question that, and I do want to know why these hauntings happen. There is so much about our planet that is unexplainable within itself. Why is it that one family can live in a dwelling and have no problems, then another family moves in and begins to experience paranormal activity, from heavy footsteps down the hallway, to full body apparitions, to items moving, or door slamming in a house. No one really knows why this is happening or exactly what it is. There are many, many theories to this. Some believe it may be residual hauntings. Residual hauntings are like a recording of the past playing over and over. It can be an old soldier keeping guard or a train in the middle of the night or children laughing. Some say it's a tragic event or it can be a very happy event that makes this type of paranormal phenomena happen, leaving back a fragment of the experienced. It is believed by some that ghosts are messengers trying to tell you what happened to them or pass on information to their loved ones or maybe to tell you to leave their house. 
Then there are paranormal experiences that are classified as poltergeists. These type of hauntings are what we really fear. This can be slamming doors, items disappearing, dishes flying off the counter, music, and footsteps. Some investigators believe this type of activity to be caused by malevolent ones, and other investigators believe that this is caused by certain people living under stress and feel it has nothing to do with ghosts. This is what Lauren Frisella, a syndicated columnist, had to say on the subject. During a poltergeist experience, the agent, in an attempt to relieve emotional stress, knowingly causes the physical disturbances using mental forces, the mental mechanism that allows the poltergeist agent to unconsciously cause these physical disturbances is called psychokinesis. Either way, the people that are experiencing this phenomena is affected. Another kind of haunting is called projection, such as seeing a loved one that has passed. Skeptics believe this is all in our minds or products of our minds, sort of like wishful thinking. This is a psychological phenomena, meaning we are wanting to see that person of whom we miss, helping us to ease the pain of loss. Whatever the cause of paranormal activity, we know that it does happen and it is very real to those that it's happening to. For most of us, we want to know why and to help others explain why and why it is happening. There are several devices we can use to allow us to hear voices, see figures that our eyes may not can see, and see the changing temperature and energy spikes. We are able to collect data from these places to catch a glimpse of what is happening. But honestly, we still do not know why it is actually happening. Hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit about paranormal investigations. Maybe this can help you or someone you know having paranormal phenomena. If you have anything you would like to add or share, as always, find us on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for listening and watching. This is Stacy Hill in New Light Video Magazine. History, hauntings, happenings. Find your truth with Sixth Sense World. www.sixthsenseworld.com Connecting us to the divine. Just about every religion has some sort of ceremony they perform. At times, it can be bothersome to us with our busy, hectic lives, so many of us start holding them off until we have completely stopped performing our ceremony. You may ask, why is it important to hold ceremony? Our ancient ancestors held great honor in their ceremonies. Many perform different ceremonies for different concerns, whether the ceremony be for a fertile rowan season or preparing for battles. Ceremony was a very sacred time. Ceremony can be an umbrella for different types of practices. Ceremony can be completely elaborate with statues, candles, incense, music, and chants. For some, a simple meditation can be a ceremony. Ceremony allows us to pull away from all the chaos happening around us and to just focus on us and our connection to the divine. It allows us to be more aware of ourselves, remembering who we are and strengthening our faith and self-trust. Ceremony always brings us back to self helping us to balance and center our lives and even rejuvenate our energy. Ceremony is like feeding the soul, feeling that emptiness we may at times feel deep inside. It grounds us, making us better able to make sound decisions in our lives. If you have a special ceremony you perform, please tell us about it. And as always, if you have a story you would like researched and brought into a new light, Send it to us and we would love to hear from you. This is Stacy Hill and New Light Video Magazine. Entertainment Central! Music trivia time. The answer to October's trivia question. Who created the zombie stump? Ozzy Osbourne. 
The song Zombie Stomp appears on the album No More Tears, which was released in 1991 by performing artist Ozzy Osbourne. This month's trivia question, who invented the glass harmonica? Look for the answer in the next issue, baby. And a new trivia question. Stick a pick holds any guitar pick to any guitar, even on the contour. It's magic, no. It's the original stick a pick. Get yours today. Theremin, the instrument you play without even touching it. Instruments intrigue me, especially the exotic sounding instruments. The theremin definitely fits this description here. Remember the eerie sounds played in the old science fiction films such as The Day the Earth Stood Still? That was the theremin. The theremin sounds eerie with an otherworldly tone. The theremin looks like a wooden box with two antennas, one looped on the side and one upright. The person plays this instrument by moving their hands in the proximity of the two antenna. The theremin uses the heterodyne principle to generate an audio signal. The pitch circuitry includes two radio frequency oscillators. One oscillator operates at a fixed frequency. The frequency of the other oscillator is controlled by the performer's distance from the pitch control antenna. The performer's hand acts as the grounded plate the performer's body being connection to the ground. Of a variable capacitor in an LC inductance capacitance circuit, which is a part of the oscillator and determines its frequency. Interesting sounding instrument indeed, but this instrument comes with a bit of a mystery. Leon Theremin, as known in the West, the inventor of this unique instrument, was also Lev Sergeyevich Terman, a Russian physicist that had worked with the KGB. His original purpose of this instrument was to develop proximity sensors. When he came to the U.S., he patented it in 1928. In the 1930s, Lucy and her husband Walter Bigelow Rosinand provided the financial support needed to produce this instrument to get it out to the public. It wasn't very long after that, Leon Theremin formed a business arrangement with RCA. Now his motives could have been completely innocent, but given the unease between Russia and the U.S. during this time, others were led to believe he was in fact a spy. Then, with no warning, Theremin leaves the U.S. in 1938, leaving behind a wife and a small child. Reports say that men from the KGB busted into his New York apartment and escorted him back to the Soviet Union to work in a prison camp laboratory in Siberia. He did resurface in 2000 for the release of his biography, Theremin, Ether Music, and Espionage. No matter its history, it is still a unique sounding instrument. The eerie otherworldly sound will make you feel like you are out on a galactic voyage on the Enterprise, Star Trek, cruising through the different galaxies. This is Stacy Hill in New Light Video Magazine. Earth Mother Prayer. Dear Earth Mother, come to me. Allow me in thy prayers. May this moment speak to me. Allow me to prepare. Come, dear Mother, be with me. The sweat that we partake. All who enter in your womb, seek within your grace. Blessed Mother, hold this earth. The mountains at your feet. The lake behind us sources us. The trees keep company. In this mix, we may partake and taste of your sweet space. Divinity will come through us. Today, we can embrace. See as far as you see. Hear as far as you hear. Be as far as we can hold and laugh and sweat and eat by Tracy St. John. The Veil, gifts for the mind, body, and spirit. Visit them online at theveil.storenvy.com. Holistic Healing, Aromatherapy, Rebirthing Ancient Healing. 
Aromatherapy has been around for a very long time. There is even mention of it in ancient Egyptian writings. The biggest mention of aromatherapy is when Diocorides wrote his book De Materia Medica in the first century. Dioscorides believed deeply in the healing properties of essential oils, their medicinal properties, and how to use them. Aromatherapy is simply the use of essential oils to prevent or the treatment of disease. Aromatherapy can be used for relaxation, clear sinuses, enhance energy, help regrow hair due to hair loss, certain types of rashes and eczema, pain, kill viruses, and bring about an overall feeling of balance. The influence of the aroma to the brain, especially the limbic system through the olfactory system, and the direct application to the skin is the mechanisms of this healing. Although the synergy between the body and the aromatic oils is not precisely known, the clinical studies prove aromatherapy to be very effective. There are several types of oils out there, so make sure to only use essential oils on your body, and even then be cautious. Certain oils can be harsh to the skin and cause irritation. Even those that have sensitivities to smell can use some oils as well. So go treat yourself to a lavender oil bath or some lavender lotion right before you go to bed and just see how relaxed it makes you. This is Stacy Hill in New Light Video Magazine. From the ground up, lapidary, wire wrapping, and custom jewelry designs by Marty Farley. Facebook.com backslash from the ground up 01. November Astronomy Photo of the Month, Galaxies in Our Midst. This month is all about appreciation, and I thought it would be an ideal time to illuminate a deep appreciation and gratitude to our planet as well as our galaxy. In this image from Hubble's deep field camera, we can see over 80 galaxies in this one shot. Isn't that amazing? In this image, the galaxies are easy to find. All the elongated or spiral or some look like bright glowing spots are galaxies. Our home, the Earth mothership, is not just one in a million. It's more like trillions plus. And what a great planet we have that provides us with everything we need for life. This image was taken by the deep field camera of the Hubble Space Telescope. The photo credit ESA, NASA, K. Sharon, Tel Aviv University, and E. Ofec from Caltech. So when you think our galaxy, the beautiful spiraling galaxy, the Milky Way, is the only thing out there in the dark canopy of the heavens, think again. This is Tammy Sabo with the New Light Video Magazine. The Savannah Deck. Celebrate Savannah's history with a limited edition box set available at www.thesavannadeck.com. Astronomy and Astrology The Celestial Event Calendar for November of 2013 Sunday, November 3rd, New Moon in Scorpio and a Hybrid Solar Eclipse Tuesday, November 5th, Meteor Showers, Taurids, Peak at 5 to 50 an hour with a magnitude that could be variable. Wednesday, November 6th, Meteor Shower, Leonids begins. Thursday, November 7th, Jupiter goes into retrograde. Sunday, November 10th, Mercury goes direct. Tuesday, Meteor Shower, the Northern Torrid's peak at 5 an hour with a magnitude of 2.3. Wednesday, November 13th, Neptune goes direct. Friday, November 15th, Meteor Shower, the Alpha Monseratids begins. Sunday, November 17th, the Full Moon is also called a Beaver Full Moon in Taurus. Meteor Shower, Leonids will peak at 20 an hour with a magnitude of 2.5. Tuesday, November 19th, Quran goes direct. Wednesday, November 20th, meteor shower the southern Torrids will end. Thursday, November 21st, meteor shower Alpha Monseratids will peak variably with a magnitude of 2.4. Monday, 
November 25th, meteor shower, the Alpha Monseratids will end. Thursday, November 28th, meteor shower, Venices will begin, and Comet Ison will come closest to our Sun with a possible good viewing. On Saturday, November 30th, meteor shower, Leonids will end. When information is beyond belief, beyond conspiracy, or beyond the norm, then it's beyond news. Find out more at articlechase.com backslash beyond news. Astronomy and Astrology Starscope Zodiac and Cusp Monthly Astrology Forecast November and December 2013 Created by me, Tammy Sabo Allow me to be your host as we look into the Zodiac and Cusp signs for the mid-month of November and December. About the Starscope Zodiac and Cusp Monthly Astrology Forecast This monthly astrology forecast brings a complete and unique forecast of the zodiac and cusp signs together in one publication. This forecast was created by calculating the movements of the planets, moon, stars, and constellations. I have interpreted how these energies may affect us by mapping the energies of these heavenly bodies based on the astrology theories and aspects. The aspects are based on characteristics, tendencies, emotion, transition phases, and positive and negative energy influences. This issue is a mid-early month edition, featuring mid-month November and early December. In November, we can all give thanks that Mercury, the planet of communication, will come out of retrograde. Hallelujah! Neptune and Chiron will also go direct in November. We will have a hybrid solar eclipse on the 3rd in Scorpio which could affect matters of intimacy, financial investments, education, and power or control. Jupiter going retrograde on the 7th will have you rethinking the past, evaluating yourself and relationships, marks a period of healing and picking up pieces that you have dropped along the way of life. To find out more information, visit our blog post at www.innewlightvideomagazine.com. Listen to our blog talk radio station to hear the magazine and chat with the staff. Starscopes, Zodiacs, and Cusp, November December, mid month 2013 edition. Aries, Zodiac, March 21st through April 19th. Emotion and intuition will be heightened. You may feel yourself getting more organized. It will be essential that you pay attention to details. During this phase, you are likely to be ready to make some fresh starts. However, you will need to avoid overreacting to situations, some you may have created. There is a positive influence happening in areas of communication and is likely to bring encouragement and support to you from others. Real breakthroughs are possible that help you gain a vision for the future. Circumstances and events tend to go in your favor as situations work to your advantage. Family will be a main focus going into the holidays. Airy Russ, Cusp, April 19th through April 24th. You may need to allow yourself to be in a holding pattern to allow situations time to unfold. This will require patience that you don't emotionally feel you have. Therefore, be careful of a rebellious side of you coming out. The influences are likely to bring out your inner child at times, creating the mood of nostalgia with a great deal of enthusiastic energy. A good outlet for you will be to make sure you give yourself enough physical activity during this influence, as well as activities that stimulate and challenge your mind. You may have feelings of being under pressure but are likely to have the support needed to obtain your goals. Taurus, Zodiac, April 20th through May 20th. The energy influences could inspire positive effects on your love life. You are likely to want to enjoy yourself, so social outings or a romantic planned date could be in store. Circumstances that come up could involve personal and business relationships. This phase is likely to require 
your more serious side. Look to have a bit of a slowdown while you get some clarity to resolve problems. You find yourself fired by a sense of urgency to know. Taking time to research an interest you have is likely during this phase. Things are likely to glide easily into December with a real feeling of balance for you concerning your surroundings and with those close to you. Torani, Cusp, May 20th through May 23rd. If you have been wanting to start a new project, hobby, or business, the influences are likely to have you motivated to get started. The influences could start intensifying your emotions, making you more sensitive to others, but could also make you overly sensitive. So be aware of your moods. When emotions are heightened during this phase, it is likely to create passionate feelings that need to be expressed. This influence often encourages your sense of determination to work through challenges concerning your work or security, while providing you with the physical energy to have the drive to solve problems quickly and efficiently. Gemini, Zodiac, May 21st through June 20th. The excessive emotional energy will be influencing a rough period. If you are feeling frustrated, hang in there. The transit will be passing soon, although your emotions may be on edge. So try to avoid overreacting or acting harshly to situations or people that could turn into arguments. Things will start to lighten up as you get energized with the influences of strong physical energy. You may have a desire to be active, join in some type of physical active event with others or exercise. You may even have the drive to start something new. This will heighten your sense of success and will fuel your desires to obtain material possessions as well your determination to reach new goals. Gemiser, Cusp, June 19th through June 23rd. The energy influences are going to give you a strong desire to make improvements or to make some necessary changes and updates to your surroundings. During this influence, there is often a creative side that emerges that is just what you need to get inspirations on redecorating or to create some new spaces in your surroundings that will provide you with more comfort and enjoyment. Communications will be heightened for you that will make this a good time for you to express your ideas or opinions to be received well. You are likely to feel a surge of energy that will encourage your competitiveness and often requires the need for physical motion and activities. Cancer, Zodiac, June 21st through July 22nd. You may be feeling like clearing the air, speaking your mind to get your point across. This could have you being more outspoken than you typically are, but could also help you be daring to do things you haven't done before. The influences will enhance your ability to speak well and be heard by those that you are trying to communicate with. There is likely to be a great deal of physical energy that will be urging you toward activity. You may be drawn to the outdoor activities as nature and the natural world could be calling for you to re-energize and refresh your spirit. Your appreciation for life in simple and big ways is likely to be enhanced allowing you to enjoy the little things in life. Canio, Cusp, July 19th through July 24th. You are possibly going through some transformation phases, internal awakenings about yourself as well as external ones regarding relationships and connections. During this phase, you are likely to put a good bit of your energy into work. This is not a burden to you. In fact, you are likely to have a great deal of passion about your work, creating enthusiasm and drawing in the support of others. Your sense of compassion for others is likely to arise. This influence could have you taking on the role of supporter, being understanding and even offering forgiveness. The vibe in the air is likely to have you considering your goals and life plans with a discovery that brings into realization that you have to embrace and nurture your own dreams to manifest them in your life. Leo, Zodiac, July 23rd through August 22nd. 
the powers of concentration are going to be greatly enhanced, making for an excellent time to get into an interest or study. Any demanding mental work. The vibe is going to be of a serious nature and cautiousness. Circumstances may be bringing on emotions of being fed up. This energy will be influencing the desire to make some needed changes in your life, to change the direction in your career or relationships. Your emotions are likely to be more intense. This will create an emotional need for love and harmony in your relationships. This influence could offer good perception and considerable intuition, allowing you to be more compassionate and understanding relating to others. Leogo, Cusp, August 19th through August 24th. Mars will bring a transit that will be inspiring that pioneering spirit and is due to affect your social life. This is a great time to get into a hobby or interest and usually involves a group working together. You may find yourself in the lead role in your social circles where you are spurring others into action to make progress in a joint interest or cause. Your friends will take an above average importance to you during this phase. However, your emotional desires are likely to be greatly moved by compassion for others and you may become combative to others who may not see things as passionately as you do right now. You will be driven to take positive action to do something to help those suffering. This could be a form of humanitarianism in groups or organizations. Virgo Zodiac August 23rd through September 22nd be careful of how you come across to others as the influences may be making you less sensitive than you realize. You may have a lack of compassion for those that are younger, not as motivated, or those that appear weaker. Therefore, care should be taken not to overreact to situations. Patience is going to be needed in order to avoid unnecessary harsh moments that you may regret later. You may require action and plenty of it to give all this physical energy a release. Therefore, prepare to be on the go a good bit. This can create a great deal of motivational drive for you and is likely to inspire new creativity in current projects or new ones that you may be starting. Verbra, Cusp, September 19th through September 24th. This month you are likely to have all the determination and energy you need and are likely to be a force to reckon with when it comes to chasing your dreams and reaching your goals, there is not much that will hold you back. A sense of urgency will be inherent. However, you may need to slow down and be patient to avoid over hasty decisions. There is an indication here that you may need to consider in following your current path to success and enjoyment. You may need to consider if you have a strong passion for your work, career, or interest as this will greatly determine if your heart is in it and how successful it will be, or if this path will be lasting. Libra, Zodiac, September 23rd through October 22nd. Circumstances may have you feeling the need to break away and put away the past to move forward. This is likely to emerge in you making a clean sweep, but not until a great deal of consideration and soul searching. It is going to be best not to force action right now. Strong emotional influences are likely to put a lively and positive accent on your love life. You may develop a natural enthusiasm for work or projects. During this phase, steady work patterns and discipline are likely to be your driving factors. Circumstances may occur that require you taking on more responsibility. As you chase your dreams, make sure you are not making extreme sacrifices that you may regret later. Lipio, Cusp, October 19th through October 24th. The strong influences occurring usually intensify the ability to concentrate and think seriously about important matters. You are likely to come up with conclusions and resolutions in conventional ways rather than taking chance by something that is risky or unproven. You're likely to be driven mentally, which will provide a desire to study and expand your mind, making this a great time to take a study or interest to a new level of comprehension. 
The energy influence often is positive and useful. Opportunities usually occur during this phase and we often have enjoyable experiences. Scorpio, Zodiac, October 23rd through November 21st. You may feel in real harmony with your surroundings, family, and your career, creating a perfect time to move forward in any career decisions. Opportunities are likely to present themselves easily and you can assume a naturally comfortable position in the direction of your career path. Circumstances are likely to create an opportunity for you to communicate your ideas well to others. Communication during this phase could put you in higher decision-making roles where others will look to you for advice and opinions. Scortarius, Cusp, November 19th through November 24th. This could be a good time to be assertive in decisions concerning your career that could lead in a very positive direction. You enter an amazing phase that really consumes this whole forecast for you. It is heavily indicated that you could experience some major life-changing events or decisions. Major transformations are likely to be occurring that will either set your goals and ambitions in a new direction or you will be picking up the step to take care of business with current projects, whether personal or business related. Your imagination is likely to flourish and be inspired. Sagittarius, Zodiac, November 22nd through December 21st. You have an amazing phase ahead that will last for several weeks. Life is likely to take on a comfortable and harmonious phase for you. Your work, personal life, and future goals are likely to feel in real balance for you. Creating an enjoyable time where you can honestly enjoy and appreciate much that life has offered you. Whether you have little or a lot, or if you feel you are successful or still trying to get there. During this phase, you may gain a sense of comfort and gratitude for what you do have. You are likely to have a focus on improving your relationships, and often this comes from a self-evaluation as to how you relate and respond to others. Sagicorn, Cusp, December 19th through December 24th. Strong influences will focus on relationships and your desire to make them work well. There may be a basic need to keep relationships alive, active, and rewarding. Energy and passion could affect your love life in a positive manner, creating enjoyable romantic experiences. The influences indicate a phase of emotion that can make you feel refreshed and urge you to be as self-expressive as possible seeking challenge and action. This may bring a chance for you to take center stage or to create some opportunities. This is an ideal time to seek work that is more rewarding or intellectually challenging. Capricorn, Zodiac, December 22nd through January 19th. The influences will urge you into taking a serious approach to work and organization. During this phase, you are often driven by responsibility to create a solid foundation to reach your goals. It's time to set some plans in motion as energies at work now can guide you to make clear decisions. The only concern you could have is taking on more than you can do, which could create nervous energy or make you feel stressed and overworked. Another influence entering will help encourage some relaxation and rejuvenation that will likely inspire you to make some updates to your surroundings to make your living spaces more enjoyable. Caprius, Cusp, January 18th through January 23rd. You may feel that you're under pressure as you may feel that you have to struggle to find a balance with your emotions and the way you come across. Finding ways of improving relationships of all kinds are likely to be of big importance to you and could relate to personal or business partnerships. Your desire will be strong to want to work through these issues and are likely going to be hard to avoid. You may experience periods that are chaotic and leave you feeling out of sorts. Circumstances dealing with others may occur that question or seem to oppose you. Aquarius, Zodiac, January 20th through February 18th. This could mark an approaching new direction for you. If you have been in a learning period in your current position, 
there is a strong indication that you are likely to be making moves forward. Your hard work and effort is likely to be paying off. Your social and personal life may be going into a new phase as well, where you may be reviewing and evaluating the values and where you spend your social time and with whom. You are likely to be inspired with a renewed sense of commitment to take a relationship to the next level. With all this emotional energy and breakthroughs, you may feel emotionally drained at times. This may bring about periods that make it hard to focus for you. Aquases, cusp, February 18th through February 22nd. You may be influenced with an inclination for taking risk, which could create an urge to gamble. There is likely to be a need for excitement and thrill that this kind of risk taking will drive you to find adventure. Emotional influences indicate an extremely active and rewarding love life and a desire to seek pleasure. You are likely to pour enthusiasm and energy into interest and add in creative originality to projects. You may experience an inner conflict with your own need for excitement and the need to restrain or control yourself. Pisces, Zodiac, February 19th through March 20th. You may be feeling out of sorts and under pressure. Influence indicate conflicts may arise between your emotional need to communicate and the way you think. This could be more of an internal issue for you that stems from your basic desire to be understood and then feeling that you aren't. This can also create a period of frustration that could lead to a blow up. You could receive support or advice on gaining a realization of your inner self as well as your ambition. Any communications could take a turn in your favor for progressive progress. Organize your thoughts to get a clear direction. This is a great time to put your thoughts to action through your creative talents. Pisces, Cusp, March 19th through March 24th. You may be in the midst of chaotic energy that could have your emotions feeling scattered. These transits indicate a strong influence of emotional challenges. Heightened emotional energy during this phase may make you edgy and conflicts may be hard to avoid. There are periods that you may feel that your ideas or opinions are opposed or ignored. You are likely to have a basic drive to support and create a firm foundation for your family. Restless or nervous energy will be best spent working on improvements to your home, spending quality time at home and with those you spend most of your time with will provide you with the most enjoyment during these transits.